Hey, Glenn here, Monster Guitars, and how good is the Viper looking? Rather good, actually. Um, this was my first time using coloured wood stains as opposed to dyes, and also my first time using true oil, and they both went really well, so how about we check out how I did it? This is the first time that I've ever used this product. It's a decent sized bottle I've got too, which is um, 32 ounces, 960 mils, almost a litre. True oil. I think before I go applying it, because it's tempting just to assume, well, this is this is just the same as any other wood oil. Before I go applying it, I will go and do a small amount of research because I don't even know what's in this. So I know what this is now, having looked it up. It's very similar to Danish oil. Danish oil is a mixture of tang oil and polyurethane whereas this is basically a mixture of linseed oil the word escaped me <clears throat> linseed oil and a polyurethane so it's very similar just a, a different oil involved so i'm going to apply it in the same way now <clears throat> what i intend on doing with this guitar is finishing the whole thing in tongue oil, but I'm going to put some color on the very top. And I've been thinking about the best way to go about this. Right, the first time that I've ever opened a bottle of tongue, uh, I keep wanting to call it tongue oil. It doesn't even have tongue oil in it, Glenn. Get it right. And it doesn't matter if I get a little bit on the top, because once all the tongue oil is on the other parts of the guitar, I'm then going to re-sand the top before I start staining it. And as expected, this particularly nice resin-filled part of the of the rimu here on the on the arm contour looks spectacular under oil. I'd love to be the person who buys this guitar when it's done. Well, I wouldn't, because that would mean I'm buying my own guitars. But you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Now this is going to be a process over a number of days because I'm going to apply a few coats of this stuff to the back and the sides and I want each one to dry before I do that. Then I will attend to the top. I'll do some experimentation on, on, um, on some scrap wood with the stains that I want to use but I think it should work the way that I want it to. Then I'll come back and I'll do the top. So I'm testing out um, my color technique to see if it's going to do what I want. I've got another piece of elm from which I'm going to make a, a guitar top in future. And just on the side of it here, I've been playing around. I think I'm going to be fine. It's doing more or less what I want it to. So I'm going to move on to doing this on the real thing. So first I want to get rid of any stray bits of oil on the surface I'm going to be staining. Okay, that looks clean. Right, so the first thing I'm going to put down is some black leather dye. 
and I'm just going to cover the whole top and then I'm going to sand it back. So that's going to take some time because obviously it'll have to dry. And I'm using leather dye because it isn't water-based, whereas my stains are water-based. And I don't want my stains to lift any of this black base. Now this stuff, leather dye, I mean, it really works in the sense that once you get it on something, it's probably going to stay there for a long time, so be careful with it. Okie doke. Now that's a pretty good job. There was a tiny amount that got onto the surface of the oil, but this is why I oiled the sides first to offer some protection from getting too messed up by, by dye. And that's pretty good. I'm just using some mineral spirits here to wipe off any splotches of which there aren't really any obvious ones but there's just a, a tiny amount okay great that looks good i'll come back this afternoon when that's fully dry and show you what i'm going to do next i'm using a brand of leather dye called feebings but there are others out there that are essentially the same thing i've seen people using angelus that's very popular with guitar luthiers for some reason but this is it's the same essentially it's not water-based as i said earlier and that's because the the stains that i'm putting over the top are water-based and i don't want those to be lifting the black base right now what i want is to sand this back so you can just see what's in the grain but leave a little bit more around the edges as a as a black burst and i've got some 400 grit paper here so the first thing i'll do is sand out the middle ah i only have one powerpoint just here and that's where the light is plugged in so i'll swap So this is where I'm going to be, going to be doing some fine tuning, I guess. Um, and you have to be, well, you don't have to be patient. You could just take it as it comes the first time, but it's not exactly the way I wanted it. So I'll just add a little bit more there. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, and I can just, oops. Gently feather the edge of that burst in places where it's a little bit too bold. But I think that's, that's getting to where I want it actually, that's, that's good. I really want to make sure that there is no excess left, so I'll just go at it again with, with the steel wool. Okay, I think that looks about right. I think that looks about right. So it's time to go in with some color. I'm gonna start with my lightest color, which is the yellow. This is a, a water-based wood stain made by a company called Resine. They do a lot of paints, you know, like the kind of paint you use to paint your house. But this is a little bit more <laughs> refined than that. This is a water-based translucent stain. Well, somewhat translucent. The idea, and this is called the Viper, 
And the idea is that it will have a sort of reptilian color scheme to a small extent. Rep reptiles don't usually have a black burst on them, but it's going to have like a yellow underbelly part in the middle with a, with a green color base. You'll see the black is not lifting because it's it's not water-based like this stain is. And this stuff wipes off the true oil fairly easily, which is very handy, as intended. Well, it does that while it's wet anyway. We may be good there with the yellow, time to move on to the green. Chances are I'll put more yellow on later just to wash the green out a bit if I have to. But green is really the, this is basically going to be a green guitar. Well, you know, a green top. Right. I'm not going to add any more yellow and make that more light in the center. I think um, I'm happy with that level. It's, it's really meant to be a green guitar. Um, and that very subtle, well, somewhat subtle yellow fade in the middle is enough, I believe. So I'll let that dry properly. And then I'll see what I think of it. I'll turn the light back on. But I suspect I'm going to be quite happy with that. It's definitely the colour scheme that I was hoping for. Mmm, okay. I've given a very, very gentle rub with some synthetic steel wool. I'm going to be really gentle not to go scratching into the, into the um, stain, just to take off any excess that might float around in the oil and cause you any trouble. There doesn't seem to have been any. So now I coat this with oil. I did try this on my test piece and it worked out pretty well so I'm not too worried about lifting anything off here. I don't think I will. Maybe you know the, the most subtle hint of color will we'll lift, we'll see. But in general, I think we'll be okay. Nothing's coming up that I can see. And the oil really makes the, both the colour and the grain pop. It um, brings out the contrast in the colour just a little bit more, which I guess includes bringing out the contrast of that slightly darker grain. It's nice. Very nice. So I'll let that dry and then I'll just continue to put more coats on the top and then several more on the whole body and then I'll let the whole thing dry for, I, know, I guess, a, a couple of days.